my one season, like I, that um, I gave someone that hope. I have no regrets talking about my eating disorder on the show. Eating disorders are a very secretive disease. I thought it would be really healthy and and a big part of um, my recovery if I did speak about it. I always say secrets keep you sick. By speaking about it, then I could do the opposite. It was like the one of the biggest um, mo like moments of my recovery. You know, it's okay to say that I. Um, had an, I'll call it an episode or a, a, a binge and purge moment. I feel like the girls on the show didn't understand that. They were giving me a hard time, like, oh my God. I remember I said, yeah, three days ago I did. And they were like, oh, you, like, you, like, you're so sick. I'm like, no, like that's, that's so great, amazing of me to tell you that because someone who is sick won't tell you that because they're sick, you know? I've, I've received thousands of letters, DMs, Facebook, all like Twitter, of how much I've helped, like from strangers, how much I've helped them in their recovery. I would get letters that would say like, from um, fans that would say like, you were that light switch, or you know, like I just needed somebody that, like that gave me hope. And it was like, oh my God, I could cry. That, um, it was just so amazing that like, my one season, like I, that um, I gave someone that hope, and it was so so worth it. That was everything. I'm 17 years, you know, in my recovery, and it's it's always, you know, going upward. You're never, they say, you're never cured from an eating disorder. That one season, like I was maybe misunderstood, you know, because if I did a second season, season that like maybe people would have understood my recovery better. I would love it to to show people that, you know, in my recovery, life is normal. I don't think about food, you know, I don't like all day, all night in therapy, like suffering from an eating disorder. I live my life like everybody else. I'm doing great and I'll keep on doing better, you know, and that's how it, how it works. So you were there for the bra party when John and Dorinda and Bethany were mm -hmm. going at it. Do you remember that? Yes, oh God. John, you're a cow. I'm a girl. That's the difference. You stop. Way down. Stop, Benny. It's fine. I'm going to anyway. Hi, Benny. I came to see you. I've never seen a man and a woman fight that weren't like husband and wife, or a husband and wife either fight in front of friends in my entire life. I was. I couldn't breathe. So I had a little accident. It involves my coochie coo. All I did was just climb through the window and like I and you had kind of straddled onto the windowsill. I hit her, but I could manage. I didn't gauge the depth of the floor and <laughs> I stepped down and I banged my, um, you know what, a little uh, the wrong way. And you wouldn't think, but I guess I got a, you know, I call it a hema tomato, a hematoma. I thought it would be fine, but I wasn't. And two hours later, I could not walk. It was horrible. And I had to go to the hospital. I couldn't pee. <laughs> but I had a catheter. I named her Kathy. And it was, <laughs> it defines my laziness. It was amazing. Like, you, you, like in the middle of the night when you have to go, to, you have to pee. I, didn't, I just didn't have to get up. It was amazing. <laughs> you are a hypocrite. What? You f Everyone. Oh, really? And you pretend that you don't. Okay, in the Berkshires, Bethany and Luann, that was kind of the start of me not understanding like women that are 10 to 18 years older than me acting this way. In high school, my girlfriends never spoke to each other like that. Um, it, was, it was, I feel like it's unacceptable. I mean, the way Bethany spoke to her, I think that was the beginning of me questioning Bethany's uh, respect for gr girlfriends. And maybe that's why I maybe wondered what would she say about me behind my back. I, I just flew up back from Palm Beach and I ran into you and John at that party on Madison Avenue. And she said, you have to meet my friend. And I said, who's that? And she said, Luann. I always feel that, you know, you have to support your friend's happiness and not to judge. I didn't know them that well, so I couldn't really have my opinion. I couldn't tell her, no, you know, don't do it. 
when I was around, he cheated on her before they got married. So I no, I wasn't surprised that uh, the marriage didn't last. That morning, when Bethany laid out the news to Luann about Tom, please don't let it be about Tom. It's about Tom. That was the day we were leaving Miami. I remember Luann going back to her room. She called me. I ran to her. She was in the bathroom. She was hysterical. She didn't think it was true, but she did. It was like 50-50. She did start drinking a lot. When we all went back on the plane, she didn't get on the plane. She went back to Palm Beach. Oh my God, she did. She went back to Palm Beach to his apartment. So maybe to work things out with him or not. Um, or I don't know, but um, she was pretty drunk. I would be drinking too. But um, it was a bad scene. Wow.